What's up guys, welcome back to another Coheden video. In today's video, we're actually going to learn how to get output from a list. Now with that being said, before we get into the video, if you guys can just please drop a like and subscribe to the channel, you'll be helping me out big time. So thank you so much for your support, and we'll get right into the video. All right guys, now that we're in our back end of our web page, um, this is my test environment. This is where I just set up everything and able to test and build out stuff on my web pages. So we're just going to create um, a new file here, not a folder, oops, <laughs> uh, new file, and we're going to call it list.php. And then let's uh, open this up and edit it. And just one quick note, um, uh, this is just what I use for my examples. I use uh, cPanel, I have my own domain, and you know, I have a website where I could test all this stuff. Um, obviously, you're probably watching this video because you already have some sort of scenario like this, and you want to implement it. So. I'm just going to assume that you have something like this set up and that you're just trying to learn. So let's uh, let's go over here and then we're going to, of course, initialize our HTML session by typing that in. And following this, then we're going to do body. And let's go ahead, just get some nice spacing here. Um, let's just add a little title header. So let's just say, uh, Please choose an item from the list, just so that we know, you know, what the page is for, and that we know the page is working. So obviously, all that we have right now is just this. So let me go ahead and pull up the web page. All right, guys, here is the web page, and I, as you see, we have the uh, please choose an item from the list, like we said. So let's go back here. Um, let's continue on. I was just trying to show that, you know, we need to prove that works and and everything's set up right. So. Let's add some spacing in between the title and our list here. So this next part is pretty important. Just like I said in my other video, um, to receive input in HTML, you're going to need a form. Or at least that's what my experience with it is. So um, the form is responsible for you know anything that's inside of the form, You know whether it's a, a text box, a list, um, various. There's so many different types of input. But whatever's inside the form, when you click whatever submits the form, it will post it somewhere. And usually I like to post it to my own pages just for ease of use, but a lot of web apps and other things actually post it to other pages. So declare form. And then the first thing that we're gonna need is action. And action is really important because this is telling the browser where you wanna post the information. So action, in, in our scenario, it's going to be our own page here, so list.php. So obviously refer to whatever URL you're trying to post the data to. You can obviously post it to the same page like I'm doing here, or you can choose to post it somewhere else. You know, I, I can post to this other file and click test so that when we actually um, go ahead and submit the form, it will route us to that page. So go ahead and set that as the action. And then the method is going to be post because we are posting the data. Okay. All right. Now that we're inside of our form here, we want to initialize a list. So to do that, we need to type select, and then we're going to name the list. And the name is responsible for what you're naming it in HTML. This is how you reference it later. Um, so the name is, is kind of important to remember. And we're just going to call it list. And since we're going to be using JavaScript at some point in here, um, you need to use ID. And I know you're probably wondering if you're kind of new to HTML, you know, what's uh, name and ID are very similar. Why, why would you need both? So name, like I was trying to say, uh, name is responsible for uh, references inside of HTML. And ID is responsible for if you're trying to refer to something in HTML with JavaScript. So down here, you know, we have our JavaScript. Let's just say that this is that. And we want to refer to this. Well, the way to do that is, you know, select element by ID, which is a JavaScript method. And then you would have your ID right here. Now, I don't know everything about that, but that's just my experience with it. So that's uh, that's my perspective. So um, then we need to obviously put things inside of the list. So I'm just going to make this an easy example. And let's just like put a bunch of fruits in here, I guess. So the way to do that is you want to create an option, and then you need a value. And the value is somewhat important because um, 
there's a display value and then a, like a behind the scenes value. And the behind the scenes value is this. So what I like to do is set it to the same value as what I'm displaying. So in this case, you know, I have this value set as Apple and then I do this and I type in Apple. So this is what the user is seeing and this is what's happening behind the scenes. But, you know, I can make this whatever I want. If I want to refer to an Apple as actually this, then I can do that. But in our scenario, we're just going to do this. All right, following this, let's uh, get a couple more options in here. So let's just, you know, have like a list of five options or so. And let's kind of just change it up a bit. So let's do an orange and a watermelon. Let's do a grape. And how about uh, a banana? Okay. And just copy this stuff over so that it matches the display. So as of right now, we should have a list that has these five fruits and we can select something, uh, select them from the list. So let's go ahead and load this. Okay, so as we see here, we have our list and here's all the options, but obviously when you click in it, nothing happens. So what we need to do is go back and first we're gonna need a button and the button's going to be responsible for submitting the form. So let's go ahead and initialize button but the type of submit. And then we are going to call it submit. And this should just make it nice and easy. Let's go ahead and save that and refresh. So now we have our button here. Uh, we should be able to select something and it'll post it to our page, but nothing else will happen yet. So great. We saw that you know the page refreshed. And when, when that happened behind the scenes, um, it was actually posting this data as a header that you can access on the page's reload. So what we want to do next is in order to actually access that value, we're going to need some JavaScript. And we don't always have to use JavaScript, but for this particular scenario, we're going to. And don't freak out if you don't know JavaScript. You know, there's plenty of, of resources online that you can use to help you figure out how to use JavaScript. Um, basically, JavaScript is really responsible for adding like more functionality to your web page that you cannot achieve with just HTML alone. So let's go ahead and we're going to initialize a script and we're going to call it type equals um, text slash JavaScript. And then we're going to add or end the script header here, or footer. And then we need a function. So what I'm going to just do is call it grab list item, because that's literally what we're doing. And inside of here, we're going to need uh, two variables. So first one is the list. So we need to refer to the list. And like I was saying earlier, um, just do document, because you're referring to the document. And then uh, get element by ID. And this is a very really important method with JavaScript. All you need to do is just refer to this and it and put in the ID of the element and then you can do a lot of stuff with that. So in our case we're going to be referencing list. So let's just go and paste that in here. So in that scenario we're going to need another variable. So var value equals list value. Okay, and then finally, we're just going to go ahead and output that to the document. And you can do that by saying document.write and then value. Okay, so one more thing before we go ahead and test this is that it, in order to actually have this function run, you need to somehow call it. It's not going to just do it by itself. So you actually need to copy this, including the parentheses. That's very important. And then go ahead up to this button. And an HTML button actually has another um, class, or sorry, method inside of it called onClick. So when you click the button, it's going to say, oh, I want to, once this button's clicked, go ahead and run this function. And in our case, it's going to be grab list item. So the way that we have this set up, everything should be working, and we should have a web page that 
completely works as far as get, uh, choosing an item on the list and then posting it to the page. So let's go ahead and save this. All right, guys, here we are on our page. Let's refresh it real quick. And on the refresh, it asks if you want to submit the same answer again. And let's just do that. Okay. So let's just choose watermelon. Okay. And as you see, we chose watermelon and then we click the button, JavaScript called the function, the function extracted the value, and then we pasted it to the page. So let's uh, try this again. So let's try something else like banana. And great. As you see, it works. And whatever we choose, it works in the list. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe or comment down below any suggestions I should do for another video. Um, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.